Hi, welcome to Parametric House. Uh, in this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can convert a series of lines. As you can see here, I can change the lines and get a new result. And easily by changing the points. Uh, by defining also a plane, which I'm going to explain in this tutorial, I can define the height and also the section, which is a simple rectangle which I'm going to explain in the tutorial how to make it and put it in uh, on the uh, perpendicular frame which is going to be the length of the width and finally we can just give any line we want to this and produce the final results so in this tutorial we're going to learn step by step uh, how to convert a series of lines into a frame and uh, we can bake that in Rhino and use it in our project. So basically this is going to be the output and we can get the final results. Okay, before we get started, remember to subscribe to our channel and like this video so it can reach more people and let's get started from scratch. Uh, to get started from scratch, what I want to do here is to draw a series of lines in Rhino. So for example, let's assume that we make a line here and bring it a little bit up, rotate it in the y direction. Even we can rotate that a little bit here. And assume that we have this line, we want to convert that into a frame. Uh, I'm going to go to the params menu and select the curve. Actually, it's a line, but when you select a line uh, container and right click and set one line, it's going to assume it's a line in Rhino. So it's not going to be useful for us. Uh, we're going to use this curve container, set it to this, and get the final results. To make it like a multiple uh, frame output, I'm going to make a copy by using the Alt, holding down the Alt key, and just moving down this, rotating this. Maybe we will have this two lines. Okay, let's set multiple lines, and we're good to go. If you want to just filter this, so if someone draws a freeform curve uh, and convert it into a line. You can just give a line container to it. If it's not uh, a line, it's going to give you an error. For example, if I just draw a curve and set this to here, you can see it's not going to give you uh, the output. Or if you want to always be sure that the output is going to be a line, uh, you can actually go to the curve and use this start and end points here. And uh, actually, let me just show the full names uh, and connect a line from the start and the end. So it's going to be converted into a line. But for now, let's, uh, let's assume that we have a series of lines and we want to work with that. Uh, the first thing I want to do is that assume that we have this. Uh, we want to define a projection plane. So this is maybe an XY plane. So it's going to be projected and we just project the start and the end on the ground. So it's going to be this point and this point. And then we just connect that into a line and we will have the base polyline frame we want to make. Uh, to do that, we can go again to the curve, start and end points. And from the transform, uh, you can find this project an object onto a plane. And as you can see here, uh, we can give the geometry, which is going to be the start and the end points and the plane. Uh, for this example, because we are always working with the XY plane. Uh, so what we can do here is to simply uh, go to the params menu and pick a point, set it here and give it to the plane. This is going to help us to convert a point into an XY plane. And if I just move this up, you can see it's like an XY plane working. So that's going to be really easy. And uh, from the curve menu, I'm going to use this point line, create a line between two points. The starting point is going to be here and the projection is going to be here. Again, the end point is going to be here and the projection is going to be here. So you can see that's working and uh, we will have the lights. Now what we want to do is to connect them all together. Uh, let's just go to the curve and use this join curve component. And I'm going to use a params menu curve container to put all of them into one. 
So one is going to be this line. This line and this line. Okay. Uh, if I connect these uh, curves to the input with the shift key, you can see that we have two polylines and it's fine. Just exactly what we need. And it's okay. But if you want to make this really uh, proficiently because we just want to have two groups of three curve. So when I hover the uh, cursor here on the curves, what I want is not six lines uh, joined together, which is obviously it's not going to be any problem because they are not joined together and they are separate. So the output is going to be okay. But what we want here is to uh, have two groups. So it's going to be something like this and n equals to three. And another group is going to be like one n equals to three. And by this way, uh, the first one is going to be joined with three curves, three uh, lines together. And another one is also going to be joined here. So what I want to do is to right click and graph the outputs. Let's also simplify them. So you don't get caught into those extra zeros. And now you can see that we have two groups which is two frames with three lines joined together. And obviously the output is going to be like two groups of one polylines. Okay, uh, let me just hide this and also right click and internalize this so it doesn't have to be connected to Rhino. Okay, after producing this uh, curves, we want to make the uh, a section here, right? So we can sweep it and produce the final results. Uh, if I go to the curve and analyze this and use this perpendicular frame, give it to this curve, uh, right click, reparameterize, and give it a zero. When you reparameterize it, it's going to be from zero to one. Uh, you can see that it's going to give you something like this, which is not what we need. So what I want to make the plane here is that uh, the X plane, maybe it's going to be in this direction, uh, if we have this as the Z direction, and the Y is going to be something like this. The reason we are doing this is because we want the rectangle to be uh, perpendicular to the frame, so we have a correct answer. You can see it's not right uh, like that now, and we have to fix this. So instead of using a perpendicular frame, uh, what I usually do is to go to the curve, analyzes, and use this planar component. Give it here. You can see it's going to give you a plane at the start. Uh, then I'm going to go to the vector and deconstruct the plane. This is the plane. So now we have the center, the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction, which is actually this one. Uh, now we can make another plane by going to the plane construct. So deconstruct and construct is a great way of making a new plane. The center is going to be here. Uh, the direction is going to be, the x is going to be the z direction. Uh, and the y, let me just turn this off. The y is going to be the y-axis, something like this. Turn this off, and now you can see it's completely in the polyline direction. Exactly what we need, and it's okay. Uh, so this construct plane is going to help you to make the plane, and now we can make the uh, rectangles inside these planes. Curve, uh, primitive and rectangle. So I'm going to say rectangle. The plane is going to go here. Obviously the input is a domain, so it's uh, like saying minus one to one. That's why it's making it like this. So what I want to do here is to simply go to the math and use a construct domain. And because I want to define if this is the plane, if we want 
a section like this with an L length. Uh, I always explain this minus L divided by 2 to L divided by 2. So we can just simply make that by expression minus X. You have to use an X to X divided by 2. Now we can just give the length here. So it's like 12.5. Okay, that is going to help us to find the length, maybe from 1 to 10 is okay. Okay, and now I'm just going to control C, control V this and give it to the Y. You can turn off the plane and now you can see that we have the plane here. Uh, now it's time to produce the final surface. So I'm going to go to the surface, uh, freeform, and use this uh, sweep one. When you have a sweep one, you can use a rail and sections to give it. So this is going to be the section. This is going to be the rail. And... And now you can see that we have the final results. If I bake that, it's going to give you the final results, but it's just open. We have to close it by giving it a cap. And just make this a little bit bigger. We can do that by going to the surface, utility, and use this cap holes. We just turn off everything. And now we have the control to give any lines to this. For example, maybe we just want to make these two lines, bring them a little bit up. And I'm going to use the tween curves command, the start, the end, and the number is maybe 10. Set multiple curves. And we are good to go. We can control the projection plane. What this one? And the thickness, the width. Let's just give a custom preview to this. You can also download this algorithm from our website. Let's just also give a uh, rep edges. So you can see that. And that's it. That's how you can convert a series of lines. And I'm going to internalize this so you can have that in an example file and produce the frames by simply just define a series of lines and a projection plane and get the final results. If you also want to uh use a curve maybe we just want to draw a curve and then uh, define a series of lines and then convert that into a plane i'm going to explain that in the advanced tutorials for the power course members so if you want to also know that you can go to our website and check that out too okay thanks for watching and uh, remember to like this video so it can reach more people subscribe to our channel because we have weekly tutorials about grasshopper and see you next time bye